Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series on this channel. Welcome to the Aquatic Dome and welcome to my big aquatic DLC project. In this project I'm going to build a dome featuring all the aquatic animals including the saltwater crocodile because that one is diving as well and this is going to be huge and it's going to be my best project I have done so far and if you guys are interested to know why I'm saying that uh, so confidently right away uh, knowing that I've done already quite some stuff in the in the in the past um stick with me today's episode will already explain a lot so for those people curious for new animals no you won't see an animal today um simply because this is the foundation we need to have um in order to build this it's gonna be complicated but it is very 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 interesting simply because I put so much effort in that this is already my fourth attempt. Uh, oh my god, you can't imagine how much time it cost me. This is my fourth attempt on, on this design. I did even drew something and I will put this on screen right now so you can see um, my plans that went into it. Um, initially I had the polar bear also as part of it, but that needed to be scrapped out later on. Um, simply because at the point I was planning it, I hoped that the polar bear would be diving as well, but uh, it's not yet, so well, I needed to, you know, leave that out. Um, this whole project has various, various things in it I wanted to do. It will feature a fully working, fully functional underwater tunnel from which you can see otters swim above your head, dive above your head and, and, and just in general make some cool funky stuff above your head. There will be a viewing gallery semi-tunnel I would say um, where you can see the penguins and the seals swimming not only in front of you but also partially above you so it's kind of this kind of sky view if you will. We will have a raised uh, air viewing area and the best thing about this whole build, it is a fully story driven tour. So that means it is one way only. It's not going to be like a park file, as you know, where you can go different direction. No. It is just one route, one way. The problem is obviously the guest can go another way, but I made it in a way that the guests definitely do go to the end of the zoo and then they go the way back because they have seen some animals already. Um, and the story is actually starting in a more like South American style, very warm-ish waters. Um, we are starting with the caiman and the otter. Um, however, you will see the first episode uh, after this one will be the otter. That's the first integration. Then we'll continue with the penguin. Then we'll have the seal and then we'll have the caiman. Um, maybe I'm going to switch that up according to your feedback. So let me know which animal you want to see next. I have to say though, um, to this point in time, so today evening when you're watching that, I only have two habitats fully done and the third one like halfway done. So the penguin and the otter is done. The seal is like halfway done. Now, actually, as you can imagine, we always have a little bit of uh, early access, but this build over here took me longer than anything I've done for any DLC, either in Planet Zoo or in Planet Coaster in the past. Reason being is I wanted to achieve something that is checking all boxes and oh my god have I checked them. I just, it took me, I think I spent the first two entire days, like over 10 hours in total, figuring out how to make the design work. Mainly because I wanted to achieve something that you guys can go in and say, yeah, well, that, that's it, that's it. it, it covers it all, it just covers it all. And I really struggled a lot during this build. So what you are seeing on screen is basically only the good bits. It's it's only what worked, okay? Um, everything, every crash, every water problem, every weird malform path, every whatever, you are not going to see because I cut it all out. It just, I could have made like three episodes only out of the process, uh, process until uh, being ready and having that look good. Um, I left a little bit of struggle in just so you can see, but I, I mean, mainly this build is about uh, showing you what goes on. So you can see I'm really doing the pathing right now. And the reason why I'm keeping that in is because you guys should see where the path goes. Because later on in the build, and I'm already so far in that I can tell this, basically you can't really tell what the pathing is. Because I managed to hide this quite well um, in, in the overall design of the dome. Like the only little issue I have, and this is the only little nitpick I already can tell you I will have over the build, is that the lighting in this dome is rather 
like suboptimal, let's put it that way. It's not really the best lighting ever you can have. That's simply how the game is. You know, there's a lot of shade, there's a lot of different weird lighting due to the dome structures, and I couldn't really integrate too much glass to the roof um, to make it more open because simply from the design perspective of this, this entire dome, which we will talk about as soon as I'm building that, is not really the best ever. Um, also, I made a huge mistake over here in terms of uh, the connection with the um, landscaping. I will talk about that later. It, it, it's been a huge mistake. I fixed it in the end, but this took me another few hours. So, what you're seeing right now is the preparation of where stuff goes. So this is going to be the um, penguin outer area. Um, at the moment, I'm just testing to put some water in um, because that's going to be um, another little cool thing that happens. The animals will actually be able to go inside and outside. Every habitat is going to have an inside and an outside part. And the cool bit about this is that there is like a like a tour, but you can see the animals go from inside to outside. So it's actually like not only a cool design feature, it's also practical reasons. Um, because as I said, I will check all the boxes. And that means we are also having a fully functional, realistic um, dome over here. So this can be like an entire part of one of your zoos. Like it's 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 been really something I have been planning more than anything else, just because I wanted it. I wanted to make sure that every kind of thing we got from this DLC is basically um, covered in a way that it makes sense and not just only scrapped into. Um, therefore, I'm, I'm not sure how long it will take, but I could really imagine that I'm spending a bit more time after we integrated all the animals, maybe to finish this project like fully. It's already quite a lot of time went into it. Like usually I would say this is like a good good point of content for the next four weeks, but that's not gonna that's not gonna be this way because it's it's a DLC. We need that content quicker. You guys are all waiting for you. We've got Christmas coming up, um, and then you know I I want to have it done. I don't know if it's done by Christmas, but maybe I'm, I'm going to try to release this as a little Christmas present for you. Who knows? Because I've got so much other stuff planned as well. But, you know, the, the reason why I said I made a huge mistake with the pathing and the water is I will use, as you've seen, I will use the little water trick. In case you don't know what the water trick is, just wait for tomorrow. I'm going to have like a full water, including uh, diving and water trick tutorial. It's going to be everything in there. What you need to know about the water. Some things have changed slightly with the update, um, but fortunately enough, not too much. So I'm not really sure how exactly the locomotion system underwater works, but um, in general, there is not that much of a change. I think that the biggest change, which you will notice right away, is the different color of the water. Like, the shading of the water has changed dramatically. It looks a lot more punchy, it looks a lot more bluish, it looks a lot more like water, actually. Um, which is pretty cool. Like, beforehand, even clean water looked a bit, little bit dirty, but now clean water really is clean and dirty water really is dirty. So that makes a lot of sense in, in terms of getting swarms, but also actual aquariums. So they have looked into that quite well. But what I did, I made this, um, like, let's say volume of water, and I did not connect the outer areas of the terrain, which will end in a total disaster in terms of putting down the barriers, I can already tell you. So the barriers, in the end, will actually be below the actual habitat. So I need to have like a complete basement area in which I have the habitat borders. Problem being is that these habitat borders unfortunately are necessary to keep animals apart from each other inside the water. So it seems that inside the water volume, just a few pieces are actually acting like a barrier, which makes sense because I think when you do the locomotion system and you still want to have some plants and some stuff and like sunken, sunken, let's say ships or whatever, shipwrecks and stuff underwater, and you still want to have like good diving, um, they can't like make it like fully, um, like, like a fully barrier, like a fully physical object, because that would kind of make the whole system go crazy and you rather have some animals you know uh, I don't know they sometimes just swim through some stuff but it's just very minor I'm gonna say it's not as as bad as with the climbing for example it's just okay it's very much okay um, but I think it, it just adds to the immersion that they still keep on swimming and keep on diving because otherwise whenever you would put something into the water that is um, keeping the four meters uh, lower than four meters the water depth then it, they just would stop diving which is not cool so I'm, I'm very much happy how they did. But yeah, so this is what I um, completely messed up and you can see that from the water volumes there's always like a little gap in between to the right and left. You can see it very clearly over here next to the path and next to the actual outer side uh, terrain area. 
But yeah, I'm going to talk about this a bit more in the real-time section because I have prepared some um, saves in between. So this time I finally managed to think about this and um, make some some stages, um, just like as Mast Bandit and Mike love to do. Um, so, you know, to talk about that a little bit in detail and not spoil what's going on in the next episode. However, we are now at the point where the design starts. And, um, you know, you will be able to jump here. If I remember correctly, I will have put in some lovely little timestamps for you and you will be now here. So the dome design is rather interesting because I wanted to do something unique that you know is not really based too much in real life and I wanted to have a design that for me personally makes sense and I wanted to have a design that is a little bit different from what I've done so far but yet still very realistic in terms of the, the style you know. Um, and my idea was to have like a half dome on both sides you know created into one. So the bigger side of things is going to be the South American slash tropical thing for like the otters, the caiman and the saltwater crocodile, while the other one which is a lot lower is going to be like the more aquatic, um, the more uh, let's say uh, arctic maybe even or like cool-ish area um, which has two big advantages. Like the first advantage being the jungle area needs a lot more foliage. Like it's it's just a lot more foliage used in there. Um, that means you need a bit more head up, uh, head space, you know, there needs to be a bit more space uh, towards the sky, so to say, um, and vertical space is very important for those things, You've, you know, you need to have some palm trees growing up, you need to have some other stuff growing up, and this was for me rather interesting to have it on one side, but then I didn't want to make this dome so massive in terms of its uh, overall architecture, because if you do make it a little more massive, it just, it looks cool, yes, but from the inside, it just really loses a little bit of interest. It loses a little bit of dynamic. And you want to have like a certain dynamic in the architecture. And this is what I tried to create by having two sides that lean towards each other and they're connected by a tilted roof design in the middle, which is roundish like a, like a dish, you know. But then again, it is tilted towards the lower side. So you get the feeling that the one side of the dome is almost overlapping the other side and it's like, like you know, leaning towards the other side, which has two major advantages. Like the first big advantage being you have a little bit of a shift of weight, you know, in terms of aesthetics and stuff. It's very important because this massive dome has a certain weight going to the center. And if the center point uh, is spreading is spreading the weight a bit more equally, that's great. But you know, you also have the chance now to spread the weight a little bit more nicer in terms of having a steady lower end wall, which is a bit more using all the concrete, you know, and the other side is featuring a lot more wood in, in the design, which makes sure that it's not as heavy. So you have the very steady, heavy concrete side being the lower one, so a lot more steady, while the more large one which actually would be would be more heavy in terms of weight and stuff is made out of wood and then also leaning towards the more steady concrete one just kind of helps the whole design also in terms of a realistic weight distribution and i think this is kind of a cool idea and i just love the design to be honest just to make sure that your eye follows the lines a bit more nicer it's all a bit more roundish and then you have the slight incline in there and obviously from the inside it helps also to get some more light in. Um, I want to say though that I might look into making a bit more of an open glass roof because at this point in time it's very dark inside the house so yeah maybe I'm going to open that up and just make it fully glass who knows but then again I would make it a bit more dome-ish because you need to have some weight distribution to it a bit more better. I just don't know I'm not too sure but you guys can comment down below how you like the design if you have some fixes about the design let me know. I think if you comment today there is still some chance I can build that in um, but here you can see already the full design of the dome and we are now going to make an entrance to this whole dome area because as you could put that in a zoo, potentially, I wanted to put it in, a, in an actual area and we needed like an entrance because this house itself from the design is really thought as a functioning house for itself that you can close off and have just a very nice area for the animals themselves and maybe the trainers and the keepers and that's about it. Meaning I did not want to have like an entrance and information and stuff like that inside of the dome. Uh, there will be some there will be some shops though, there will be some food to grab and so on, but there won't be like, you know, a, a typical entrance. Um, it, it should be something where you can close off the the food shops and stuff, close off the doors and then close off also the shelters from the outside and then the animals can all live in the inside of the dome when the weather is bad or whatnot in case of a storm or stuff like that. And you just can 
you don't fully close it off. Um, and I said I wanted to check all the boxes and this is also why we needed to do the design like that. So this is going to be the entrance building. And oh my boy, was I scrolling through the menu with all the new pieces and stuff. I gotta say though, I'm I'm like 95% happy with the design of the entrance. So there will be some tweaks about it. I have some more ideas. Um, I wanted to go with a very classic Newport Bay-ish style. I don't know if that makes sense for you, but for me, Newport Bay is is kind of what I know from uh, Disneyland, you know, the, the hotel Newport Bay. Um, but it, it goes into the kind of Californian um, wooden pier structure, um, kind of buildings, you know, pier, pier side buildings, uh, what you kind of see also in San Francisco, but then again, also on the, on the whole um, west coast of uh, the US. And, you know, this kind of style with a lot of wood, very pastel ish colors, a very bright wood also worked into it, and then these two typical slate roofs and stuff. But yeah, as I was trying that around, um, I found the four meter tower build way too big, way too massive. Um, and so I was coming up with my own design here. Um, I mean, you guys know me. Um, whenever I don't feel it, I just need to do it myself, which is a lot more pieces. But I think uh, performance-wise, that should not be too much of an issue here. And we are doing good. We are doing good on pieces. I think there's also been like a lot of improvements with the update. I have some very solid performance on all my projects. Maybe Koali is still a bit stuttery, but you know, it's Koali, so <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, but I mean, just in general, guys, um, I really think this is great. But now we really need to have your interaction. What do you think about the uh, the idea of having a dome? Uh, what animal are you most looking forward in this dome? And also, please let me know what you want to see maybe me doing um, with this build, or maybe also another build. What what do you think shall we do with the uh, with the update, with the aquatic DLC? And of course, since this, this game and update is maybe out for like a couple of hours now, please let me know your first impressions. Do you like it? Do you think it's a good thing? And do you think um, this is the best DLC we have so far? And if there's something missing or if you if there's something you don't like please let me know also in the comments below what this is what you dislike about the dlc because then i can reach out to frontier you can reach out to frontier we all can because uh, shante will most definitely be reading the comments as dahlia and all the others will be so please let me know the feedback down below in the comments as you know um, Shante has been already a few times in my streams and stuff like that, so um, they're willing to listen and I think they showed us what impact they can make if they listen to community feedback and bringing the stuff that we really wanted. Um, so come on, just go down in the comments, smash those all in, make sure there's a whole bunch of stuff going on um, so we can actually direct this all to Frontier. And if it's only praise and thank you, do it as well because I've done that too. I've been, I've been really much looking forward to that and I really was hoping a lot that they will deliver something like that and they did so at the end of the day I am super stoked and super happy that they made this and yeah it's just incredible but now we're coming uh, towards the end of this um, time-lapse part so you can see I'm doing like a little logo here but again to to check all the boxes they also get like a little um, uh, holding system in the back because it's just like a uh, logo that puts onto the roof um, but yeah, so we see each other at the other side of the cut in a few seconds, um, talking about the design a bit more in the actual file, and then hopefully you guys are as excited for the next episode as I am, and so let's jump over, shall we? Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we are, this is the real time part, and I gotta say, I'm extremely happy with the sidelines over here, it almost looks like as if this is uh, meant to be exactly this way, I think this is also going to be like the, the, the screenshot or like the... Uh, this, you know, um, the thumbnail, that's the word I was looking for. I'm so stupid. I'm just so stupid. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Um, anyways, I wanted to show you the design. So as I said, I'm I'm not like 100% happy with the design of this uh, tower over here. I'm going to change it a little bit. You can see there is some 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 bugs going on still, so like moving these things a little bit or whatever. Um, we will have some picnic areas over here, like a little chill out relaxation area. But that's like for the final touches, you know, we, we want to get to the animals. And there's already some stuff happening in the inside. But uh, funny enough, this is not meant to be what it is at the end. It's just like a little testing. Mm. I gotta say, I love this design. However, it of course looks a lot 
too repetitive so I'm, I'm gonna switch that up you know this is uh, stuff for the end like all this tweaking also we still have some opening spaces here I mean you could argue that this is like airflow um, which to be honest is kind of the stuff but we need to still make sure that this can be closed off in certain times um, and then also obviously in the middle there is still something missing in terms of um, weight distribution and, and in terms of uh, uh, steadiness like there's a lot of stuff we have to do with like a big pillar in the middle we need some uh, iron kind of guiders and stuff going on here but what I really wanted to show you is the insane um, insanely tedious path work because in the next episodes you guys will not be able to see that much more um, there's some designs over here from some fencing it's, it's all gonna go um, that's not the final design I needed to change so much in order to make it work but I, I succeeded so that's pretty pretty cool um, yeah you go in uh, as I said this is going to be a full tour so I'm gonna give you a quick full tour um, because there's nothing in so this is the design just so you know that's the entrance. I quite like the, the color pattern and stuff. Um, let me know in comments down below if you don't like it, but I'm quite a big fan of this little, uh, you know, fours in the back. I didn't want to make it gray as this side is. I'm going to give it like a bit, a bit of a blue little elements. Don't you worry. So that's going to happen. Um, but then again, you go here and you could take the outer route, but I'm really hoping that since I'm going to place the caiman down here in the front, um, people are more leaning towards going in because the more crazy animals uh, and the more attractive ones will be to the to the left hand side to the back and so I'm hoping that they go take this route because it's shorter than the outer route but I have to do some testing about this now you go in and you go into this little zigzag little jungle tour on this zigzag jungle tour you will be able to see this the Kaiman swim over here and they will have a little bit of a outlet just to chill down on this side and you can watch them maybe chilling down here besides the sides and stuff. You can see them over here. Um, quite some cool stuff. And then you go further and you will see the otter like swimming by and stuff like that. It's really going to be really cool. Um, you can also see yourself on the other side, which I'm going to close off a bit, of course. So it's going to be like a bit more of a nice tour. And then we go further down, 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 down. And this is, um, I think it's, I changed the pathing as well because it's not looking that great. Um, yes, we will have a little of backstage area. And then over here, um, this is going to be the tunnel. And here you see already a little trick. If I move a little bit up, boom, there we go. Inside of the water, outside of the water. Inside the water, outside the water, inside, outside. This is an actual working water volume, guys. Don't you worry. You can see the water is actually working. Again, the tutorial is about to release tomorrow, don't you worry, I'll got you covered. Um, it's it's actually a little bit of a painful thing to do, but it, it works wonders and you can do a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot of broken pathing in here, but um, it, it's all going to be covered up. So yeah, this is what I meant. You will be able to see the animals not only from from straight on, but you will actually see them halfway to the uh, to the top, which is kind of cool because the diving mechanism uh, really allows us to be a bit more creative with these viewing galleries. You just don't need to look straight. You just need to look up a little bit and see them playing around. And it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. On this side, I meant it to be a bit more on, on down level because here is going to be the seal and also the penguin. They will be both here. And then um, this will be pretty cool because you can see them diving a lot more on ground level because they just tend to do it. And then if you go very close to the border, you can actually look uh, to the top. There's still a little bit of the water volume in here. You can't really do too much about it, but that's about it. And then we go all the way over here. You can see the saltwater crocodile. That's going to be this area for it. And then you go in here, which will be like a little bit of a closed off area. You go up here and you get another view of the otter. And uh, that's kind of cool because the otter is going to be able to roam around all over here. Um, they're going to swim in the water. You can see them, you get a nice fencing and stuff like that. And then we go over to this area. You will have another wonderful look to the seal. So we're getting from very warm to a bit more less warm to even more less warm to even more ar uh, arctic. I mean, you have seen the underwater stuff. There's no, no way not doing this here because I wanted to have the viewing on this side. I really was thinking if I can make it in a way that the underwater viewing of those animals is coming later as well but that was just too much of a pain to work it to the back side of here so I just decided to keep it to the inside to maintain also this kind of cool very huge underwater gallery it looks fancy at the end so don't you worry and then you go over here you get another nice view of the saltwater crocodile again you go to the outside and then you will be greeted by the big outside area for the penguins and um, at this point I'm not really sure I'm struggling at the moon with myself even 
I'm not sure where to put it, but I think the outside area of the seal will most likely be more on this hand side, rather integrated in here. I think I want to really keep this to the penguins, and this is going to be the seal area. And then over here we go all the way around the um, saltwater crocodile, and again the otter, and the outside of the caiman, and then you're back with the tour, and you'll be done. This is it. And also somewhere in here the terrapin will be integrated as well. I'm actually not sure where. I most likely down in in the in the cave, but we will know. We will see then. However, guys, I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, first episode of the Aquatic slash Aqua Dome, however you want to call it. And I am more than excited to come up with the next episode. Tomorrow, there won't be the Aquatic Dome. Tomorrow, there will be a little look into the tutorial. And there will also be a bit more stuff about uh, Yosemite. And then, in the next days, coming days, we will obviously have a lot to do with this dome. So don't you worry. The order is coming, I think, about Thursday. This is what I'm trying to do at least. Um, planning is going crazy uh, because there's so much content I have for you and then over the course of the weekend you will get more and more the penguin and the uh, uh, and, and obviously also the seals and you know all that kind of stuff. Good stuff. I can already tell you. Good, good stuff. So make sure to keep your eyes on the channel every evening um, around 17.30 or 5.30 uh, Central European time past morning, afternoon, okay, just so you know, um, and uh, in case you guys like this, in case you like the content and you want to see more of it, please consider subscribing, that helps me a lot, and also, you can help me reach 50k before the end of the year, that would be insane, so please, guys, uh, leave me, leave me your love, so to say, and I'm gonna see you in the next one, and again, a little reminder, let me know everything about the DLC, how you like it, if there's any feedback, what you would have loved to see, and uh, just all your praise, Please leave this down in the comments and I talk to you in the next one. Goodbye everyone.